Greetings, Earthlings. Welcome to Elevate Consciousness. Today we're going to decode the movie, Lucy. This movie gives you the premise that humans only utilize about 10% of our brain capacity, though this theory has been shown to be untrue. What is more likely is that we are using 15% of our neurons at any given time, and this neural focus shifts around the brain. Whatever the case may be, it is a generally accepted fact that we are not using our brains to their fullest potential, and that we have latent, untapped cerebral abilities. We barely understand the brain and its 100 trillion connections that reside within its 1.4 kilograms of gray matter. Various situations show how the brain has hidden abilities. Autism can bring out certain extraordinary abilities of the mind. Some people have a photographic memory, and some people have gained creative and memorization abilities as a result of head injuries. Martial artists and meditating monks have both demonstrated amazing control that the mind can have over the human body. The placebo effect shows that we can heal ourselves simply by thinking that we have taken real medicine. We are able to enter flow state, a mind state where we can do difficult things perfectly and fluidly. There are other deeper mysteries of consciousness. Why can we feel it when people are looking at us? Why do people report having out-of-body experiences? There is synesthesia where people can see sounds as colors. Some humans and animals may be able to sense magnetic fields. There is the potential that people have to get relevant information through dreams. This film is trying to answer the question, what could it mean to truly maximize the human brain potential? Let's look at the title of the movie, Lucy. Lucy is from the Latin root lux, which means light. Lucy means light one or shining one. Interestingly, it is also the root meaning of the director's first name, Luke, spelled L-U-C. Light is a form of energy and symbolically represents being awake, seeing, and knowing. It symbolizes information and consciousness. Some theories claim our consciousness is directly connected to the sun, our resident source of light for our solar system. Light is the key word in the term enlightenment, which means awakening. When you wake up, you open your eyes to the light and leave the darkness. To see the light is to know the way. To be in darkness means to be ignorant and lost. Light is life. All plants need sunlight and all animals need plants. So either directly or indirectly, all life is somehow dependent on light. Sunlight is important for our health. Everything is nature, everything is connected, and a major element of nature is light. All of these connotations of light are the different levels of meaning contained within the name Lucy, a woman who becomes enlightened and godlike. Lucy represents the awakening of humankind, going from one level of consciousness to the next. She is the evolution and revolution of human ascension, the journey from dark to light, non existence to existence, asleep to awake, unconscious to conscious to hyperconscious. The first thing we see in the film is darkness, and then, the first single-celled animal. Existence goes from dark to light, non-being into being, from nothing into something. It is like the Big Bang Theory, which purports that all matter emanated from a single point in space, out of nothingness. As it says in the Bible, with God's first act of creation, let there be light. The single-cell animal splits into two, and it is the first cell reproduction. Within the division, one can see the Vesica Pisces, an important mathematical and spiritual symbol. The Vesica Pisces is two circles that overlap in the middle, symbolizing how everything that is divided is always still inextricably connected. Everything is one. Behind the duality of reality, there is singularity. Every living being is related, generated from the same single cell ancestor. This is reminiscent of the story of creation in Taoism. In Taoism, after the splitting of the one reality into two things, the myriad of infinite things is born into existence. Within the Vesica Pisces, we can see the ichthys fish, symbol for Christianity and Christ. It can be found in the overlapping circles that appear in the flower of life, an important pattern in nature and biology. It is the shape of the female genitalia, the sacred place where human life is created and born from. If you turn it over sideways, the Fasica Pisces looks like an eye, the organ we use to perceive light. The eye symbolizes light. 
The eyes are a major motif throughout the movie. The cells continue to divide and multiply until we come to Australopithecus lucy, known as the first human and the earliest genetic proof of human existence before reaching the DNA of apes. She is possibly the missing link between apes and humans, and she possesses genetic traits of both. Lucy is a symbol of evolution, from ape to human, and then human to metahuman, like the mutants in X-Men. The modern human brain is about 65% larger than that of the Australopithecus. It's fascinating to consider how much the human brain has developed and grown over these 3 million years of existence. Australopithecus, discovered in 1974, was named Lucy after the song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Many believe that the song was inspired by the psychedelic LSD. The film shows us Taipei 101, which in 2005 was the tallest building in the world. This movie is about evolution and the natural instincts coded into our animal-based DNA, and buildings are a way of demonstrating dominance in the human-animal hierarchy as a kind of phallic symbol. The country with the world's largest tower can have some claim to being a so-called alpha male. Our human instincts are in fact animal instincts, sequenced in our DNA, and evolved to present day from that first single-celled animal. It's like the quote from Westworld Season 1, where Anthony Hopkins' character says that all of the great deeds in history are nothing more than some elaborate human mating ritual for men to prove their worth and get the best pick of female DNA in order to spread their genes through their offspring. Beethoven, Mozart, William Shakespeare, Michelangelo, and the Empire State Building. Just an elaborate mating ritual. We meet modern-day Lucy, an American expat living in Taipei, who appears to be one of average intelligence and questionable taste in men. The man she is dating, Richard, synchronistically mentions to her that the first human woman is named Lucy, and he says this right before she begins her journey of evolving into a higher consciousness. He shows her that his hat is made in Taiwan, and Lucy is about to be remade in Taiwan. He handcuffs the suitcase of drugs to her wrist, pressuring her into delivering it inside of the hotel. Interspersed with Lucy delivering the case, we see shots of cheetahs getting ready to pounce on some gazelles as prey. The gangsters are the ones using Lucy and Richard as prey. Lucy is wearing a leopard print coat, foreshadowing that Lucy herself is going to become the new apex predator animal. As the gangsters take her away, one of them gives the front desk man a roll of money, conveying that the concierge is just another animal in the human jungle trying to survive. The drug contained in the briefcase is blue. Blue and purple represents the highest vibrations of the color frequency on the light spectrum, with red being the lowest vibrational frequency. In the chakra system, red represents human beings' animal nature of survival, and blue and purple are the higher powers of consciousness in human beings. We meet scientist Professor Norman, whose name sounds like normal man. Norman symbolizes the great achievements and knowledge modern-day humanity has to offer. Lucy, on the other hand, represents the next level of humanity with superhuman abilities and higher awareness. This theme of ape, human, and superhuman evolution in relation to tools and technology is very similar to the film 2001 A Space Odyssey by Stanley Kubrick. Norman explains that with a single neuron, life can exist with the most basic level of consciousness as a sensory reflex. With two neurons, there can be physical movement. From this basic neural foundation, all of the great variety of life on Earth is generated. Norman talks about how the actual measurable difference between animal and human consciousness is relatively small, but that small difference has allowed us to create all of the complex technology that we possess, even allowing us to go into space. The very first tool, synchronistically, is fire, and fire is a symbol of light. Norman shows images of great human accomplishments. We see the Sistine Chapel by Michelangelo, depicting the creation of Adam, the first man, by a white-bearded god. The fingers of Adam and God do not touch, showing that man is attempting to reach the level of God, but has not achieved it, yet. We see this alluded to at the end of the film when Australopithecus Lucy actually does touch fingers with the evolved superhuman Lucy, showing that Lucy has achieved godhood, bringing the rest of humanity with her. 
Professor Norman makes the point that while we have developed external high-tech tools to acquire auditory sensory information, dolphins have naturally evolved auditory ability into their bodies much greater than humans. We need complicated tools to gather sound information, and dolphins can do it themselves. So which creature is truly superior? The intimation here is that dolphins intentionally evolve this ability with the power of their consciousness and due to their need, and are better able to use their brains than we are. They can adapt to nature's changing conditions from their consciousness and bodies, but we must create something external. When we see the home base of the gangsters, we are greeted by a huge Asian dragon. The dragon is an archetype of the most powerful primal energy, making it a fitting symbol for those obsessed with power and control. It is a spirit animal, aka animal totem, a symbolic mythical representation of the genetic animal algorithms that lie in our human DNA. All animal life is connected, and we can clearly see this in the comparison of various animal embryos. There is a legacy of animal data within our genetic structure that goes all the way back to the first single-celled animal. The dragon is one of the most significant and omnipresent symbols in human culture, symbolizing the totality of the universe and the bridge between matter and spirit the known and unknown. It is the last symbol that she sees before truly leaving her old existence. The dragon is the first hexagram of the I Ching. It is the hexagram of total yang creation, life force, energy, and rebirth. The dragon is an omen, signifying her transformation into godhood. A British man explains that they've sewn bags of the synthetic drug, CPH4, inside the bodies of Lucy and three other men. The drug bag leaks inside of her body expanding her cerebral capacity and giving her superhuman abilities. Over the course of the movie, her cerebral capacity climbs to 100%, and as her brain potentiality increases, she gains more and more superhuman powers, until she becomes omnipotent. The drug triggers her genetic mutation into a higher being, not unlike Terence McKenna's ape theory that suggests Apes' brains evolve due to the consumption of naturally occurring psychedelics in nature, giving the ability to create language and improvement of visual acuity for hunting, among other things. There is evidence showing mind-expanding and emotional benefits of psychedelics for creativity, inspiration, and psychological healing. Professor Norman speaks on the purpose of life being to live longer, to gain time. To gain more time is to gain more life. Lucy later realizes that time is the necessary illusion which allows the unfolding of life to exist. In order to gain more time, aka life, we must either become immortal or hand down the necessary information for the next generation to continue to survive. All animal life does this through DNA, passing down what we've learned through our genes. Humans are different in that we pass information in other ways, such as through teaching and creating records of data. Professor Norman states that it is up to us to push the rules and laws and to go from evolution to revolution. Evolution is something that happens on its own, and revolution is something that happens by choice. He is suggesting that we must consciously choose to evolve. A man brought in to test the blue drug is wearing a shirt with the words, Youth and Revolt, alluding to this revolution. Reaching our highest spiritual potential will take conscious effort. It will not happen by itself. Intention and work are required. Being lazy, chasing pleasure, and avoiding pain will not get us there. We must do the work to gain mastery over our minds and bodies. Norman shares the scientific fact that there are more connections in the human body than there are stars in the galaxy. The implication is that each human mind and body is a galaxy in itself and contains a galaxy of information. It is like the Hermeticist aphorism, as above, so below, which means the macrocosm is mirrored in the microcosm, and vice versa. When it comes to gaining more control over our minds, after the ability of total self-body control comes the next level of abilities, the ability to control other people. After that, the ability to control and manipulate matter. We are shown a film of a magician, because such powers of mind over matter are considered as magic. Space Odyssey author Arthur C. Clarke stated, Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Magic is how humans see science that we don't understand yet. Lucy's eyes turn iridescent blue, vibrating on the higher frequency of the color spectrum. We see Lucy ravenously eating a bunch of leftover food, 
because the brain utilizes a lot of energy. The brain is only 2% of the body's weight, yet uses 20% of its energy. And with her increased brain power, she needs a lot more energy. Scientists theorize humans do not have the muscle mass of our animal ancestors because evolution went to our brains. Lucy notices that her hearing and other senses have become hypersensitive. The more aware you are, the more sensitive you are, the more information you are taking in. Having more information means being able to feel and perceive with more clarity. She goes to the hospital to get the drug bag removed, during which time she calls her mom. She is not only having a physical and mental evolution, but also a spiritual awakening. During this process, she is realizing the most meaningful thing in the universe, love. She intuitively knows that she is, for all intents and purposes, going to die, and wants to talk to her mother at least one last time before she fully transforms. She can feel the space, air, and the rotation of the earth, as well as all of the unconditional love that her mother has given her since she was born. Specifically, she can remember her mother's milk. Mother's milk represents the love and life energy passed from mother to child. Lucy is experiencing enlightenment, and in the short time she has left, she cherishes love. We are again reminded of the color blue, as her mom says, thanks for calling out of the blue. And while Lucy remembers that she had a Siamese cat with blue eyes. The surgeon explains how CPH4 is filled with power and energy and likens it to an atomic bomb for the body. CPH4 is a fictional chemical that is based on a real molecule produced by pregnant women in pregnancy. It's extremely powerful and gives a fetus all of the necessary energy to form the bones in its body. Lucy goes on to torturously acquire information from the head gangster while simultaneously revealing some deep wisdom. She says learning is a painful process, and it's true. The process of enlightenment is painful, and true deep knowledge and wisdom requires great sacrifice. One must die and be reborn. Odin hung on the tree for nine days to get the wisdom of the universe. Prometheus's liver was eaten by an eagle every day for eternity due to stealing fire aka knowledge and power from the gods. Yeshua let die his physical ego to be born anew with the wisdom of spirit. Lucy sees that the things that make us human are actually very primitive, animalistic. We are controlled by our DNA in order to survive and reproduce. She calls these primitive drives obstacles, barriers that block us from what we could be, drives that we cannot control. These are our DNA-coded animal impulses. She says humanity is only at a primitive stage on the road to knowledge. Anger, fear, and desire are strongly based in our natural animal survival impulses. And true free will means not being controlled by these biological urges. She uses touch telepathy to read the gangster's subconscious visual memories and to find out where the drugs are being sent. This is like the movie Limitless, where the main character is able to pull up all kinds of information buried in his subconscious mind. Consciously, we may not always be able to recall information and memory, but our subconscious has a huge capacity to store information, able to be accessed at will or under special mental conditions, such as hypnosis. We know much more than we are aware of. We see Taipei 101 with a rainbow, an auspicious omen of light for our main protagonist, who is finally free. Her roommate tells Lucy how she slept with a man the night before. Again, we are shown how humans are controlled by our animal instincts, programmed into the DNA. In this instance, it is the instinct to procreate. Consciously, this woman sees the man as attractive and powerful. Genetically, her DNA is telling her that this man has the qualifications to create strong and capable offspring. Lucy contacts Professor Norman, telling him what has happened. She explains that she is no longer controlled by her body, aka her animal nature. She no longer feels pain, and everything that once made her feel human is all falling away. She is losing her individual identity, aka her ego. As she loses this sense of a separate self, she is becoming one with the universe. She is experiencing enlightenment. She is becoming pure light. She asks the professor what she should do with the new knowledge. Professor Norman tells her that all life, including single-cell animals, has one clear purpose, and that is to pass on knowledge and information. This is reminiscent to what the Ascended Masters told Buddha when he became enlightened. 
The story goes that after Buddha became enlightened, he neither feared nor desired anything and could be perfectly content with doing nothing for the rest of his life. However, the spirits of the wise masters came to him and begged him to teach what he has learned, and out of compassion, he does just that. We see Lucy's passport, and her birthday is March 10th, making her a Pisces. Pisces is symbolized by two fish. Remember the first division of the single cell into two and the Vesica Pisces symbol? In addition, she's born in 1988, the year of the dragon. Remember the dragon statue we saw earlier? She is becoming a dragon, a being of godlike power. While causing a car to accelerate, Lucy says we never really die. This is because everything is energy, including us, and energy cannot be destroyed or created. It can only change form. Lucy recovers the chemical from the police at a hospital, and she kisses the French police officer as a reminder of what it means to be human, what it means to feel romantic love. Lucy finally meets with the professor and his colleagues. She proves her cerebral abilities by telling a random scientist that she knows about how his daughter died. She explained that she knows this because of the billions of cells in our bodies are all interconnected and exchanging thousands of bits of information every second. The information is all around us and within us. We just need more brain power to be able to access it, which she now has. Cells come together, forming a giant network of communication that solidifies into matter and evolves and adapts according to our environment. This coming together of cells has created all of the varied animal life on Earth. She says humans are not as unique and different to animals as we think. She explains that all of our ideas are just a sketch of the actual reality, a map that is a symbolic depiction of the territory, but not the actual territory. Our maps of meaning are guides to make reality manageable. The problem is that we lose sight of this and take words and ideas too literally. Lucy says one plus one has never equal two, and that there are in fact no numbers and no letters. Behind the illusion of separation, everything is connected, everything is one. Everything comes from nothing, so on some level everything is nothing. Lucy proves this point by showing that a car moving faster and faster will eventually disappear into nothingness. This is similar to the wave-particle debate. Is light a particle, solid matter, or is it a wave of energy, and not a solid thing? Is anything solid? Or is everything just temporary holograms made of sound and light? To further iterate this point, at the quantum level, it appears that the majority of reality is composed of empty space. She goes on to say that time is the ultimate quantifier of existence, the passing of one moment to the next. Professor Norman realizes that time is unity. Time unifies everything in the universe into one singularity making everything in reality fit together like an all-encompassing clock. Everything is connected and affecting each other while marking the passage of time. This is also a major metaphorical element of the comic book and movie, The Watchmen. Lucy is now ready to take the last of the drug and utilize 100% cerebral capacity, becoming one with the absolute. As Norman foreshadows earlier, she has to intentionally force it to occur. Norman worries that the knowledge she passes on will be used for selfish material gain and cause chaos because of humanity's destructive nature. Lucy says ignorance is the true cause of chaos, not knowledge. Knowledge and wisdom is our only salvation. Ignorance is darkness, and knowledge is light. Norman thanks Lucy for her great sacrifice to pass on this knowledge, the sacrifice made by all the great teachers and masters. She takes the final amount of the synthetic drug and we see light pouring out of her. She turns into pure energy and consciousness, dropping her personal identity and ego, becoming enlightened, becoming light, becoming one with the universe. Her consciousness traverses space and time, going to New York City and then going to the city's past. She goes back to the time of indigenous people who see her and probably think they are having some kind of mystical vision. She goes to the time of the dinosaurs, and finally, she meets the first Lucy, Australopithecus. Both Lucys reach their fingers to touch, like Adam and God in the Sistine Chapel, except that this time they actually touch. Lucy is becoming God. She went from being nothing to a single cell, then a single cell to two cells. She went from ape to Australopithecus to human and human to God. 
She continues backwards through time to see the beginning of the universe. Planets that were two become one, and then cells that were two become one, the Vesica Pisces, as above, so below. We are each in the universe, and each one of us is a universe unto itself, like Indra's net. Indra's net is an infinite network of jewels, and in each jewel is the reflection of all the jewels. We see comets surrounding the sun, looking very much like sperm and an egg. Finally, we get back to where we started at the first cellular mitosis. She condenses her great knowledge into a USB flash drive. She has become one with God, pure consciousness, pure energy, merged with the universe. She is omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent. She leaves behind the knowledge and thus ability for humans to continue existing through time. She says now you know what to do with it. The movie's ultimate message is the answer to the question of what to do with the time we all have. We must continue passing knowledge, spreading the light, and elevating human consciousness to its fullest potential. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did like it, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and remember, elevate consciousness constantly.